Hello and welcome to the John Ryan Podcast. Today we'll be talking about American imperialism. At this time, American imperialism had started to spread all over the world. Guatemala was one of those unlucky few that succumbed to American greed. Three major American companies that thrived in Guatemala were Electric Bond and Share, International Railways of Central America, and United Fruit. For years, these companies thrived because they were free from tax and were not subject to labor regulations in Guatemala. The previous leader of Guatemala, President Ubico, had given United Fruit a 99-year lease on their land. Many people viewed this as an unjust and unfair act. What is your view, Ryan? Well, Joe, Ubico giving United Fruit a 99-year lease was very unlawful considering that United Fruit had around 550,000 acres of land. All of this land was now unobtainable by the Guatemalans that truly needed it. Ubico was not an admired leader of the Guatemalans. In fact, he was a very harsh and stern leader. These factors tied in to spark an event called the October Revolution. To quote Kinzer, young officers staged a lightning uprising in top of the old regime. Guatemalan's own, October Revolution, was won at the cost of fewer than 100 lives. Once won by the public, Guatemala's government became a democracy. Back to you, Joe. The winner by popular vote of the first democratic election was Juan Jose Arvalo. Arvalo believed in helping the working man and bringing Guatemala into the modern age. Arvalo helped create a foundation in Guatemala's new government. He fixed a 48-hour work week for workers, guaranteed the rights of trade unions, and placed a land tax on the large landholders. Every one of Arvalo's biggest accomplishments threatened United Fruit. United Fruit had been free from tax and limitations for decades and were basically able to write their own rules. This was all beginning to change. After Aravalo came Jacobo Arbenz. Arbenz was walking into a standoff. It was him versus the three major American companies, United Fruit, Electric Bond and Share, and the International Railroads of Central America were enormous monopolies in Guatemala. With that amount of control came an unfair amount of power. Arbenz confronted the unbalance of power by enacting the Agrarian Reform Law, this law stated that the government could seize all uncultivated lands on estates larger than 672 acres. This law dramatically alarmed United Fruit because they currently had 550,000 acres in their grasp and nearly one half of that was uncultivated. Joe, what is your input on this? Do you think this is fair? Yeah, Ryan. I think this was completely fair and just. One main resource that was denied to the Guatemalans for decades was the land. Night Fruit by itself claimed nearly one-fifth of the country's land and only used around 15% of it. These three companies had control of the country for years, and with that in mind, Arbenz was doing his best to limit the effect of these companies on the country. Arbenz and the government were able to seize around 234,000 acres of United Fruit's 550,000. The government offered United Fruit $1.1 million in compensation, but United Fruit refused the offer and demanded around $19 million. When denied their $19 million, United Fruit began their campaign. Yes, precisely. After being denied their $19 million, United Fruit waged a propaganda campaign. This was the first time an American company would attempt to politically assault a foreign country's power. The first part of the campaign was that United Fruit had New York Times publish articles about how Guatemala was becoming under the influence of communism. These articles were being directed at the American public so that they would support United Fruit's campaign. In truth, United Fruit had not a single piece of evidence for their claim that Guatemala was falling into a communistic state. Along with the articles from New York Times and other leading papers slash magazines, a man named Cabot Lodge delivered speeches on how Guatemalan leaders were crypto-communists. Lodge had every reason to help United Fruit in their campaign against Guatemala. Lodge was one of the men that United Fruit made rich. These lies caused Americans to believe that Arbenz was leading Guatemala towards communism. The Dulles brothers, Alan and John, were two major supporters of United Fruit's propaganda campaign. One of the Dulles brothers was the Secretary of State, and the other was high up in the CIA. Both brothers had a large involvement in the government, and they were just the supporters that United Fruit needed to set their plan into action. Ryan, what exactly did Alan come up with as his plan? Well, Alan.
Allen and other officials decided to recreate an old operation named Operation Ajax, but adjusted it to fulfill their needs in Guatemala. They renamed the operation Operation Success. Quoting Kinzer, it would start with a propaganda campaign, proceed through a wave of destabling violence, and culminate in a, st a staged attack designed to look like a domestic uprising. Allen decided that it would be a good idea to find a leader for the uprising. The ideal leader would be someone who would follow America's terms. Yeah, so this idea was very well planned. They decided on a man named Carlos Castillo Armas. Armas agreed to the job immediately when encountered by American officials. He was known for trying to start an uprising in the early 1950s. Once Operation Success got final approval from President Eisenhower, they were all set to start. Armas was supplied with soldiers that could help him pose as having a full-scale rebel army during the uprising. Exactly. Armas was pretty much just a face in the uprising. He did not really engage at all with his army. He was just there to make the Guatemalans believe that it was him causing all the violence instead of the United States. As for the actual violence, the United States would send CIA planes from their air base at Apalaca to bomb Guatemala. The air raids would last for hours, bomb after bomb. Guatemalan officials were informed that it would not stop until Arbenz was taken out of office. America had Arbenz exactly where they wanted him, pressuring both him and his country. In my opinion, all this pressure made it easier for America and United Fruit to get what they wanted. As time went on, more and more people began believing the propaganda. The Voice of Liberation was a constantly played radio message that's use was to basically brainwash people into siding with the uprising. As time went on, the bombing raids continued and Guatemalans became more insecure and susceptible to believing what they heard. Operation Success almost failed because out of four CIA planes, two were shot down. Dulles had to talk with President Eisenhower to request two more planes for the operation and Eisenhower agreed. As stated by Eisenhower, if at any time you take the root of violence or support of violence, then you commit yourself to carrying it through, and it's too late to have any second thoughts. Once given the new planes, there was a great chance at success. Soon after the new planes were set into action, the Guatemalan officials gave in. They called in Arbenz to let him know he was being thrown out. Soon after Arbenz was disposed of, he was replaced by Castillo Armas, and Armas was proclaimed President of Guatemala. Armas was placed in power because the United States knew if he was, they would benefit from him. Dulles gave a speech to the American public, talking of their great victory, and how the Mar Guatemalans were truly the ones who decided to get rid of Arbenz. That was a very untruthful statement, but that was just another example of the secrecy of American imperialism. In my opinion, Operation Success was a very sneaky way for the United States to undermine another nation's government in order to resist losing benefits of their own. What exactly do you think, Joe? I agree with you, Ryan. I do not believe it was the greatest thing to do to the Guatemalans for the fact that all they wanted to do was make their country better for themselves and limit the amount of American involvement in their country. I believe Operation Success probably set back Guatemala even further when all they wanted to do was step into the modern age. And that concludes the Joe and Ryan podcast on American imperialism.